Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. And tonight we are going to be talking to Miss Irish Benton or Miss Jean Benton here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. She is the founder of Diva Nation Against Domestic Violence. So I'm looking forward to speaking to her this evening to get some updates on Diva Nation, what's going on in 2020 with her, and also to find out how she is implementing self care during this stay at home orders that we are going through right now together as a nation. We are gonna be talking to her live here on the Speak Up Inspire series with Zoom and Facebook Live. But while we're waiting for her, I just wanted to do a quick shout out to Miss Ashley Feaster. Miss Ashley, sent my daughter a nice little package here and the package had inside of it a color street are you able to see that yep there you go a published uh color street catalog here and she also write a very personal note to Miss Heaven here on here because I wanted to get Heaven into something that she enjoys and that she can start her own business with. So Miss Ashley sent this to us, which was really, really nice of her. I think I know sit down. There you go. <laughs> she sent this to us for Heaven. And there was some really nice colors inside. It's a really pretty color. And so Heaven was using the color street to do her nails. And she said that she liked it. So we did it. It was very easy to use. And so if you have never heard of color street, definitely check them out. Um, they provide nails, so nail, custom nail colors and everything that you just take out of the package and you can put them on your nails. They are very, very easy to apply, great for, for teenagers, great for someone who wants to do or start their own business. Because I know right now, a lot of people are unemployed. A lot of people are looking for new opportunities to make some money. So if you are interested, I definitely would recommend Miss Ashley Feaster. I met her at Vicki Humphrey's event a couple of months ago. I believe, no, actually, I believe it was in October um, during Domestic Violence Month, Awareness Month. And that's where I met Miss Ashley. So again, Color Street. And this is Miss Ashley right here. I'm also going to tag her in the comments so that if you are interested yourself in starting your own business, selling something that every woman in the nation could use, which is beautiful nails, then definitely check her out. I'm going to go ahead and tag her right now in the comments. So if you are interested in learning more about Color Street, please make sure that you look her up and find out exactly what it is that she is doing with Color Street, how she can help you start your own business, and also just check out her products. I mean, they are amazing colors, different designs, all that, and they're very inexpensive. So if you're looking for something to make some extra, extra money, I highly, highly recommend reaching out to Miss Ashley and talking to her about the business opportunity. We are gonna be featuring women and men all month because a lot of people are unemployed right now. They're at home. They are wanting to do something to make money. And what better way to make money by selling something that's inexpensive that almost every woman and girl does for herself. And that is beautify and take care of herself to enhance her beauty. And that includes our nails. So definitely check out Miss Ashley. Um, she is a, um, a distributor, vendor for Color Street, amazing woman, 
check her out for a business opportunity. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it will be a very good experience. A very good experience. So right now we have Miss Irish. Hello, Miss Irish. How are you? Hello, I am well. How are you? I am doing good. I am doing good. It's a Monday. I've been dragging all day today. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand. <laughs> yes. Well, you are looking gorgeous as ever, Miss Diva. Thank you. And I am <laughs> loving the locks on you. Love it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I am I'm kind of I'm excited about it. Um, a little nervous. So we'll see. We will I see love how it. Goes. It's just gonna grow. It's gonna get longer and more beautiful. But I love it. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate that. So, Miss Irish. Now, I'm. I usually call you Jean. Which do you prefer? You can call me Jean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Miss Jean. So, um, let's go ahead and get right into this. I know that we are in 2020. I know that um, Diva Nation always has something going on. So, tell us what's going on right now with Diva Nation. Well, let me let me backtrack because maybe some people don't know about Diva Nation. So, yeah. tell us what is Diva Nation and what do you do? Yes, so Diva Nation is a nonprofit organization. We are a 501c3 nonprofit here in Cabarrus County, mm -hmm. and we are advocates. We advocate against domestic violence. Um, okay. Diva is D I V A, um, but it's divinely inspired, victorious advocate. Um, so I want people to know that because it has nothing to do with evil influences or you know, uh, <laughs> anything like that. But um, okay. Diva Nation is relatively, when we talk about divas, I'm talking about women in general. I'm talking about sophisticated, being sophisticated, being classy, being independent, um, being your own boss. So that mm -hmm. is in terms of what we mean by Diva Nation. <laughs> yes, yes. And when I heard the name of your organization, and then I looked at you, and I was like, that completely fits her all the way through, all the I way. Actually, yeah, so I think I'm actually, um, you know, I know it's D-I-V-A, but there's also the Diva Nation that deals with, um, like, you know, witchcraft and things mm -hmm. of that nature. So we don't want people to get that twisted. That is not what we reference. No. No. So we Not. have to divide it up D period, I period, D period, <laughs> A period. Diva right. Nation, divinely inspired, victorious advocate. Thank you so much, Ms. Tiffany, for bringing that attention to um, our viewers. Yes, definitely. Okay, so you help victims of domestic violence and you do a little bit more. You've been doing some things with the county, a lot of things with the county. So um, tell us a little bit about that. How's the experience been working with the county to reduce domestic violence? Well, right now, um, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, so I work uh, relatively close with C-Van, which is one of our women and children, local women and children's shelter. And believe it or not, I really have great news. Um, when speaking with them last year, the numbers are low, okay. which I think is really good. I think that means that, you know, one or two things are happening. One, one is we're seeing progress. Yes. We're, we're getting the information out there. People are getting um, the information. Um, people are getting the help. Um, or two, uh, perhaps, um, perhaps, just perhaps, people aren't able to escape due to the coronavirus. So I think what you and I are doing, I know Butterfly Vision has been doing a tremendous job with keeping awareness alive, you know, out there for viewers to see. Um, I have not been doing a lot of um, publicizing about the, uh, the coronavirus and domestic violence, <clears throat> excuse me, but I am keeping up with um, the news. I am keeping up with guys like you. And um, just today, just today in the state of New York, I got, I received a phone call from a victim, um, a domestic violence victim who is now hospitalized because of COVID-19. And be it all that it's bad, but in a way it's good. She's now away from her abuser. And I was able to talk to her while she's in the hospital getting treatment along with another child um, there are two more children at home with the abuser, but she's able to call, check in on them.
But the good thing is about this now, um, Tiffany, is that she's able to talk to someone. Right. Um, she's able to um, perhaps talk to a social worker in the hospital. Um, the social worker can now put her in touch with, a, with an advocate in that city, whereas mm -hmm. she has not been able to get access to that. So I think that is the glory out of this. Being okay. able to be somewhere where she can actually, one, she's safe, she's safer now, believe it or not, she's mm -hmm. safer now there than she is with the abuser. So right. we still have a lot of work to do, still a lot of things. And, you know, I think it's, I think it's amazing when I get re uh, referrals from out of state. You know, I, I absolutely think that's amazing. Um, upon talking with her today, she had no idea where her resources were in her county in New York. Oh, wow. So that, okay. So that goes to show you that there's still so much work that needs to be, so much advocacy, so much community work that still needs to go forward. Right, right. Um, I was watching the, the last probably two or three weeks, they've been saying that domestic violence is on the rise since yes. people yeah. are starting to be um, told or but basically our world is being put on yeah. lockdown and everybody has yeah. to stay at home. Yeah. Um, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? What's your feedback on that? And my thoughts are, of course, my hearts go out to victims. Um, one of the things we know as survivors is isolation is probably one of the worst mental states that a person can be in. So now mm -hmm. you're isolated with a victim. You have no way to escape. Um, you probably feel alone. Um, you can't really reach out to anybody. You can't call anybody um, because there's no place to go. Um, I wanted right. to go back to, to I wanted to go back to our um, county. We were uh -huh. talking about the county, so we want victims to know, or we just want people in general, the public, to know. In Cabarrus County, although we are under a stay-at-home order, um, there are still bases for victims to contact your local police department. You can still contact your local um, services, uh, whether it be Mecklenburg County, whether it be Cabarrus County, whatever your county is, there are still people that are available behind the scenes that are able to help you. So we want people to know that. Cabarrus County, um, they had a wonderful article. I don't know if you saw that, but there was a one wonderful article um, about two weeks ago where um, one of the things they mentioned was domestic violence victims. We are still here. There's a number for you to call. We can mm -hmm. still make those arrests if we mm -hmm. need to, to. We can still get you to a safe house if we need to do that. So people okay. need to be aware that those services are still operational. Right, right. Um, I just wanted to read something in the New York Times. Um, it was... Today, actually, at 1.03 p.m., they posted um, the, the, an article that says, a new COVID-19 crisis, domestic abuse rises worldwide. Um, so it said that um, the United Nations called on Sunday for urgent actions to combat the worldwide surge in domestic violence. I urge all governments to put women's safety first as they respond to the pandemic. Yes. And then it says that governments largely failed to prepare for the way the new public health measures would create opportunities for abusers to terrorize their victims. Now, many are scrambling to offer services to those at risk. Yes. So yes. Um, that is very good that Cabarrus County has put that out there yes. in yes. the public yes. and out in the news. Um, yes. I have not, I did receive something from Safe Alliance about two and a half weeks ago saying that they, their lines are open, their hotlines are yes. open. Yes. But yes. as we know, Safe Alliance is always Always, always. <laughs> and and the oh, thing is, oh. I have not I have not gotten the numbers from Mecklenburg County, uh -huh. um, and I, I wish I would have. But I know in Cabarrus County, our numbers are looking uh -huh. really good, considering uh -huh. um, where we were this time last year. And right. that's just based off a phone call I made last week. So I was pleased at the numbers that I heard that were currently there, which is right. very low. Which is very low. Right. Um, yeah, I have not found out what the numbers are, but while we're on our interview right now, I'll be looking for it. For uh, I'll be looking it up <laughs> so that we can share it before we get off this call, because both of us work very closely with Cabarrus County and Mecklenburg County. Um, I have not seen the numbers as far as domestic violence um, 
within the last two weeks. And so I'm gonna be looking for that while we're on this call. Um, okay. Tell us about what, what are your plans for divination going forward? Do you have, I know that a lot of people are having to cancel their events and so forth. So what do you have coming up yeah. that does not involve yeah. public so, gatherings? So as, yeah, so as you know, um, Every year, Diva Nation Against Battered Women, we host a free community lunch and learn that has been one of the biggest parts of our advocacy in the county. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we were due to or scheduled to have our first luncheon was scheduled March 21st. Mm -hmm. um, and we had not heard word from our venue um, when the pandemic began and we were all hopeful and praying, had no idea that it would get to this capacity. Um, yeah. And then the week, the week, maybe a few days before that scheduled luncheon is when we got notification from the venue that, um, that, you know, they were um, actually closing their services until I believe the end of April. And, and now it looks like it's probably going to be May. Yeah. Um, so we currently have um, three or four luncheons scheduled this year. So of course we are postponing. Um, we were scheduled to have one this month, which would have been April the 18th. Um, her name is Deborah Denise. I do believe you probably know her. Yes. And of course, uh, I met, mm -hmm. yeah, and of course <laughs> I met Tanya Smith through you. She uh -huh. is an amazing woman. Um, she was our first scheduled guest. Um, yes. Deborah Denise, I have Pamela Ann um, with Mecklenburg County coming to speak. She was scheduled to potentially still scheduled for July. Um, okay. And then we have, um, there's there's someone else and I can't think of whom that person is at the moment. So what we did differently this year, Tiffany, was whereas last year we did like eight consecutive months of lunch and learn, mm -hmm. we cut back this year. Um, one of the reasons I cut back was due to um, something that you've been talking a lot about this year is self-care. Mm -hmm. um, so I've really been practicing a lot of self-care um, so sometimes what you have to do is you have to, you sometimes you have to go back to the drawing board. Sometimes you have to review things. You look at what worked versus what didn't work. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed was we were having the lunch and learn and we were having very little turnout, but we were spending, you know, the budget was overturning buying food, buying materials, mm -hmm. and you, you get people to register. So, right. so basically you base your budget on registration right. and they not show up. So what, so what I decided to do this year was just to minimally cut back just a little bit. Um, and so we, we broke it down from eight to four this year. Okay. So, and I think that gives me more time to um, work on some things. I'm now in ministry school. I know I, I think I've mentioned that to you. Yes. So mm -hmm. I'm now back in school. And so now that is, I'm getting older, it's a little different for me to retain a lot. So I, okay. I'm trying to juggle. I'm trying to juggle divination. I'm trying to juggle ministry. I'm trying to juggle personal life, um, you know, taking care of me. So a lot of cutbacks um, this year, but we are still very much, still very much involved in the community. Right, right. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, you're... Your Lunch and Learns, that's where I met um, Miss Katrina Thomas, and um, you were able to meet uh, Sierra, who's another advocate. So your Lunch and Learns definitely bring together people to share stories, to share resources. Definitely something that I highly recommend to anybody who wants to um, go to a gathering among survivor advocates to, to hear their stories and to be able to exchange ideas. Definitely, definitely a very good event. So I know Tanya Smith and I know that you guys had to reschedule that. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Ms. Tanya came and spoke to, at um, Safe Alliance with me and that was her first time sharing her story. And I believe you were there that night too. I was there, I was yes. there. Yes. Yes. yes, so she is phenomenal. Um, she is still going through the storm a little bit there but she is getting through it gracefully and yeah. helping others now. So yes, I, yeah. that's gonna you be a very what? good I'm, one. I'm glad you said that because um, even as survivors, mm -hmm. we, you survive it but you don't forget it. That's true. So it's, it's, it's important for people to understand because some people will say, you forgive, you forget. Forget mm -hmm. about it. Let it go. 
But those are lasting memories. You never forget that turmoil. You never forget that hurt. Um, you never forget the disappointment. Um, and another thing I want to share really quick tonight is even as a survivor, mm -hmm. even as an author who has written two books, now writing a third book, um, you still have what I consider trigger moments. Yes. Um, just this week, I promise you, someone sent me a friend request on Facebook and his name resembled one of my my abusers. Oh, okay. And automatically my mind reverted and I thought, you know, oh my God. Right. So of course I declined. <laughs> right. <laughs> of course I declined. I don't I don't need to be friends with any of my uh anybody with names of my exes, but yes. <laughs> just to bring it into a um a, a, a home is that just because you survived doesn't mean you forgot. So right. I totally right. understand what you're saying. Um, they're, they're probably um, not as much, but there are times, just for instance, that trigger that I sometimes revert back to those thoughts as well. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's definitely hard. Um, I think the last uh, Speak Up and Inspire series I was talking about, so, kind of similar to that, um, <clears throat> where we do have triggers. Just because we're survivors does not mean that we don't have triggers, does not mean that we aren't still going through the healing process. And I think I think I can speak for all advocates in saying that that's the, the norm um, for a lot of advocates that there's always going to be something there that does remind us from time to time of what we've been through. And to me, and I don't know if you agree with this, but that just makes the work that we do even more important. Even better, absolutely, absolutely. Because you then, when, when you reflect on it and you go, wow, now yes. it makes sense to me. Um, yes. I know a lot of times it's really hard to, um, it, it's really hard to comprehend why you went through certain seasons of your life mm -hmm. and you always question why me why was it me one of the best quotes that i love to say and it's my own quote is that god picks the best soldiers for the front line he absolutely picks the best for his front line which means that and i'm not saying that in a negative way like everybody's not designed the same way but what i mean is that he knew who would be able to be strong enough, who would survive it, who would be strong enough, and who would be more in uh, courage or had enough courage to now share and tell their story without shame and guilt. Right. So that's what I mean by that. Um, 10 years, I'll, I'll just reflect, 10 years ago, I never saw myself here. 10 mm -hmm. years ago, if I would be honest, and I'm very honest and transparent, and you know that, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, I didn't have a foundation. I didn't even know who I was. I didn't know what I was, what my plans were. You know, you, you should always have a five, 10 year plan. You know, mm -hmm. even in high school, you're thinking about college, even in college, you're thinking about your career. So you should always be at least five years ahead. I always remember saying, even in, in, in uh, community college, you know, well, what are your plans in the next five years? Or even if you interview for a job, what are right. your next plans? And my answer would always be, I want to work for myself. I want to be my own boss. But I absolutely had no idea what that meant. Absolutely had no foundation. So now with a nut now with a five year plan, I'm not thinking 10. <laughs> uh, you know, five, not thinking 10, but five mm -hmm. year plan is um I, I'm getting myself into position. Mm -hmm. I'm currently getting into position to where I will be my own boss. I know that I'm supposed to have my own office. I know that, you know, the organization is just like the, the milestone. Right. The organization is that planting. It's that now we have solid foundation, Tiffany. Right. We have solid foundation. You're you're in school. You're advocating. You have an organization. You're doing, you, you wear many hats. Hats right. off to you because mm -hmm. you even have a family and children. Mm -hmm. I could not do that. But you now have stepping ground, you have foundation. Right. And so now with the foundation, you just build from that. So I have foundation and I'm actually just building. Right, right. Well, that's good. Um, I think some people have the desire to have their own business and some people don't. 
And when you, you know, when you have the drive and you know the reasons why you want to have your own business, and then you have the drive, you have the, the support system, which is really, really big. Yeah. Yeah. But then you also have a purpose like you do, then having your own business just makes sense. It makes um, sense. So, yeah. yeah, it does. So yeah. for you, I know that you said that you are going to ministry school. So share share with that. What are you going to ministry school? Tell us about it. What is your goals for that? So, um, yeah. so um, probably back in between November and December, I began writing a vision plan. And part of my vision, I had to, I had to, I had to look at my past vision. Mm -hmm. I had to look from a, a past lens to see where I was and where I, where I need to go, mm -hmm. where I, I desire to go. And so I wrote a vision, and in my vision, I had about ten things. And ministry school was, I believe, number four, between three and four on my list. So I'm halfway okay. through my list. I'm halfway through my list. A lot of things I've been able to check off. Um, okay. And so um, enrolling in ministry school is because um, I carry a desire to minister, not just to women and not just to advocates, but um, I just, I, I, I have a desire to minister um, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, that's just something I carry deep within me. Um, and that's just a calling um, that I know that I have on my life. And so in order to, to be able to minister um, to someone, I, I needed to be educated. I needed to um, get, get the information, get the resources, and to be able to be an effective um, minister. And I don't mean, and so let me clarify this, because I don't want anybody to think that she's saying she's going to be a preacher. That's not what I'm saying. Um, okay. But more of an evangelist type, um, because I do a lot of that, believe it or not. Um, yes. When I come into contact mm -hmm. with my victims, Somehow we just end up going that way. Um, right. And so I thought that for me, it's a personal thing and then it's a business thing as well. So ministry school has been wonderful. Um, I'm in a, a Grace Biblical and Seminary um, and I began my courses in January and I will officially graduate in December with an associate. So oh, wow. I am so yes. I am wow. so proud. And then from the associates, I'll be going into bachelor's. From bachelor's, um, I'll be going into master's. And yes. So that's wow, another that that's amazing. another foundation. That's another okay. foundation. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. I know that there has been times where um, I've been in your presence and we're out maybe speaking together or something like that. And then you just get this look on your face. <laughs> and you can see that you're thinking about something. And then the next thing I know, we're all in the prayer circle and you're you're praying for us. So I yeah. can definitely see that happening. <laughs> I could definitely see that happening. Um, yes. how has how has that been how has that been received? Because I know some people might take that, uh, you know, someone wanting to pray over them and having this big prayer circle, that might be overwhelming for some people. Yeah, like absolutely. for me. Absolutely. Yeah, I know that would have been overwhelming for me, but some people yeah. really need that and they they yeah. they take it so well. So how yeah. have you have you seen that when you're you're out advocating, but then you, you know, add the spiritual. I have the shift. I call it a shift. Um, mm -hmm. you know what? Prime example today, uh, with the with the victim in New York. Um, mm -hmm. she doesn't know me. I don't know her. Mm -hmm. Um and 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 the way that the referral came was someone sent, screenshotted me a post that she posted. Okay. Um, I really don't even know who the person was, but maybe perhaps someone said, hey, I know an advocate. But okay. to answer your question, as she began to tell me her story and, and giving me graphic details of how her husband has graphically described to her how he's going to kill her, that oh. automatically... That automatically shifts me to begin praying because I know how serious that is. So yeah. now not only do I have a victim, but I've got a life that's on the line. Mm -hmm. And so I know that I need to pray because we need some covering over this, this woman and her children. Right. Um, and as I began to talk to her today and I, and I asked her, number one, mm -hmm. I asked her, was it okay if I prayed for her? So I do get permission. Okay. Um, and she absolutely was like, um, 
sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and so when she said that, I feel like maybe I am the first person she's encountered that has asked her, can I pray for you? Yes. Can I pray for your children? Can right. I pray for your situation? And for me, Tiffany, I know every advocate is different, but for me, spirituality, and, 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 and it could come in any levels. You could be mm -hmm. spiritual at any level. But mm -hmm. for me, I feel like the biggest part of my advocacy, there has to be a level of spirituality there for me in order for me to operate, in order for me to um, know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. It makes a difference for me. Mm -hmm. So I think um, what you're saying, and in my case, most people that I come into contact with, they've received it pretty well. Good. They've received Good. it pretty well. So I haven't had anybody to say, oh, no, I don't want you to pray for me. I just <laughs> need you to get into a shelter. Oh, no, I don't want to hear anything about your God. Just right. so, so fortunately, fortunately, I have not run into that. So I thank God for that. Good, good. Yes, I know that all of us have um, certain components that we bring to the table as advocates and going out in the community, and that is definitely your strong suit. Uh, for me, it's it's talking about mental health and how mental health has a lot to do with being um, a victim from going from victim to survivor. So yes, we all have those components of things that we add to it that we feel that are important when we're out talking to people. So definitely understand that. So I wanted to ask you, you know, how is this going for you right now um, with the stay at home orders? Are you working? <laughs> are you working right now? How are you doing right now? Oh, wow. So uh, I am an essential worker, which means Good. I work in the medical field. Okay. Um, so I am having to leave home daily, mm -hmm. uh, but very cautious. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, um, social distancing is practice, is practice at work. Mm -hmm. Um, normally when I get off of work, I'm home or unless I have to go and visit my mom on another level. Um, I think being single, and I think I mentioned this, uh, a post you put up, mm -hmm. um, I thought, wow, this really isn't bad as I thought it was. Um, okay. but there are days. Uh, transparency. There are days I go, wow, you know, it would be nice to have someone to talk to or someone to enjoy all these movies with. Like this weekend, I watched about six movies by myself and yeah. ate boxes of milk dugs. <laughs> <laughs> so, and my keto, she, my keto coach knows that in case she's seeing this now, I confess, <laughs> I confess that I fell off the wagon. I've been in milk dugs. That's part of the that's part of the isolation, you know. Yeah. Being in yeah. isolation, but um, but but being on um, but honestly, um, uh, you know, it's really given me a lot of time to reflect on life itself. Um, so many things that I perhaps took for granted. Um, sometimes I thought when I thought the worst was the worst for me, um, I'm seeing that this is the worst for other people, and I'm really yeah. in a good place. Right, right. I'm really in a bet. I'm I'm really in a good place right now. Um, my heart just you know for people I know you talked about. There are some people that aren't handling this well. Some people are you know maybe dealing with depression, maybe dealing with PTSD, maybe dealing with um mental illness, maybe you know as we spoke earlier, they're isolated with an abuser. Mm -hmm. I can only say, and this is not to undermine anybody, when I look at my life now, where I was six months ago, mm. I'm in a good place. Good, good. Six months I can ago, if I, if, if I now was where I was back last October, I mm -hmm. probably would be in a mental institution. But <laughs> yeah. that's the thing of knowing that God knows exactly, every um, timing is everything. Mm -hmm. Timing is everything. So I'm I'm in a really good place now. So thank you so much for asking that. So this this girl is I'm I'm okay. <laughs> good, good, good. And I'm I'm really proud of you. Thank you, you. Um, you and I both had a rough year last year. <laughs> we both had a rough year last year, and we called on each other a lot. <laughs> um, prayed with each other. Ah, uh, screamed with each other cried with each other. We did so much together last year. 
and now I'm about to start crying again. <laughs> I am. You got me messed up. Oh! <laughs> you um, were, were definitely there for me and supported me with what I was going through. I hope I was the big support for you. You were. You were. And yeah. when I tell you, I'm looking at you right now, and I see so much beauty in you right now. God. I see a woman who is strong and courageous. And just really coming into her own, you are like looking at you now. And even when you were here for the anniversary, the anniversary, you were still there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, know, but you looking at you now, like I just see this beautiful, bright, just vivacious woman. Um, and I'm so proud of you. You have Thank done amazing things for for yourself because it was important for you to take care of Jean, for you to take care of Irish. And I'm looking yeah, at you now. I have, I have. One, is, one thing that I want to say tonight for anybody that's listening to this um, podcast, whether you're Facebook Live, whether you're, you know, podcasting, you are the most important person you have. That is so true. So many times we give so much of ourselves to others that we forget about us. We forget about who we are. We forget about our purpose, our design, our creation. And I have, thank you for talking about self-care because I don't get to respond to a lot of the things you do because my schedule, but Mm -hmm. just know, don't Mm -hmm. take light. You're helping people. Because people forget, people forget about me because I need to take care of them. I need to take care of this. I need to take, and you forget about you. And then by the end of all of you taking care of everybody else, you go downhill. And then who's there to take care of you? Who's there to rebuild you? Who's there to take, you know, who's there to help you through it? So when self-care came about, it came about in a time that I was going through depression. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I'm, and, and most people that are in my circle and know this, I went through depression last, um, between last October, between last October and probably around January, um, mm-hmm. within se- severe depression, um, so much that I had to go to counseling, you know, yeah. because in those moments, in those moments, even as an advocate, even as a strong person, it seemed like I was catching my last, I always thought it was gonna be my last breath. I just thought it was gonna be my last breath, but I made it. You did. One morning I woke up, <laughs> I woke up one morning and I wasn't crying anymore. I woke up one morning and I was like, oh, okay, I'm, you know, I still have things to do. So I just wanna encourage anybody that's out there Anybody that's listening, you are the most important person to you. You are. And people need you, but you also have to need something from yourself. Okay? And that is self-love. That is knowing how to love yourself. That is knowing how to take care of yourself. And one of the other things about self-care, Tiffany, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you even talked about this in your self-care group, but being able to say no is yes. a big one for me. Yes. I think we talked about this in um in December. Yes. I don't know. Yes. I used to have that was my weakness. No was my weakness because I always wanted to do and I always wanted to take care of, you know, other people and neglect it myself. So if it's not, if it's not something dire, if it's not something emergency that it can go on without me, um, it just depends on what it is. I'm you know, I've learned to say no to a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. And that definitely is part of self-care because if we are taking on saying yes to this person, yes to that person, yes to everybody else, then where where's the time for ourselves? Right. We can't have time for ourselves if we're constantly saying yes to other people. Right, and it's, right. It's and okay to say no. You're burning out. <laughs> Yeah. And 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 um, another thing that I learned, a big lesson that I learned, and I think I talked to your husband, Cedric, about this. I don't know if you were doing our interview. 
was mm-hmm. that I became so consumed into my to other people that I neglected a relationship, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was a big lesson for me to learn. Um, so now I know that my next relationship, um, mm-hmm. I have to have that, I have to have that time. You know what I mean? Right. There has to right. be a cut off time for business so that I can right. make sure that I'm giving quality time to my personal life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I do that yeah. now and I'm single. Yeah. I have a cut off time. <laughs> I do that now. I have a cut off time, and I do me. So, yes. you know, yeah, yes. yes. Um, Self care is definitely important. I've I know of a lot of advocates who take time. Um, a lot of people take Sundays off. I know that yes. you said that Sundays was a day for you. I know a couple of other advocates who are taking Sundays off. Um, I tried to implement the Sundays off. That didn't really work for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just make time for myself. And um, you were supposed to have an accountability it. partner. I know. Right. So I will be contacting that accountability <laughs> partner. Yeah. I will be contacting that person. That did, that did not happen. Sundays was not. <laughs> Sundays is still a day that yes. I work. But yes. I do try to make time for myself um, more than I used to. Because yes. after the year I had last year, and I really, really felt that I was about to either be hospitalized yes. or have a nervous yes. breakdown, I really, I really had to stop and take care of myself. And yes. you had a lot to do with that. So yes. I want to thank you. Yes, because I heart. said to you, sit down somewhere. <laughs> You're doing too much. <laughs> you did. You told me to sit down. You definitely did. And I at, at, at got to a certain point, I had no choice but to sit down. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yes, I took off the last few months of uh, 2019 to just focus on mm-hmm. getting myself together. And I'm so thankful that I had you and Katrina yes. and Katrina, Lisa, telling me to yes. sit myself I think, down. I think Katrina is everybody's mama. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, Katrina is everybody's mama. Yes, she is. She is. And she's very good at it. She's yes. definitely very good at it. <laughs> but then we have to remind Miss Katrina to sit down sometimes too. <laughs> um, yes. And I have and trust me, I've told her you you do too much. You're yes. going too much. You need to rest. Yeah. So I do. Yes. Yes, I definitely One of the things I wanted to um, I, I wanted to share really quickly, uh, Tiffany, okay. before we move on. I'm um, going back to the community. I forgot to mention that this year, Divination um, Against Battered Women, we're also doing the C Band uh, Easter Basket Operation, is what we call it. Okay. So this year, um, last year we had the um, honors to do about 14 baskets. Mm-hmm. Um, this year we're doing six. So that's kind of where I was talking about the numbers being lower. From last right. year, this week, um, this Friday, I will be delivering baskets to the children at C Van again this year. So that okay. is our um, second year, our second okay. year doing this, and um, it's just an honor. You know, it it, it, it warms your heart knowing that you kind of take some weight off of the moms, um, right. and then you know that a child is still going to have Easter, even despite of whether it was COVID nineteen or not. A right. child will still be able to, in an in a unfamiliar place, still feel somewhat normal, you know? Right. So that is one of the things that we are doing again this year, and that is um, we will be delivering baskets on Friday. Okay, awesome. Can I ask you roughly about how much each basket costs? Like just a rough um, well, estimate? Well, based on the numbers we had in the ages, um, about mm-hmm. 10, about $10 about- per basket, yeah. Okay. All right, awesomeness. And you, you're you doing six baskets, you said? Um, we are doing, well, yeah, we are doing six, but we have, so technically we will be doing four mm-hmm. because we have two that are above age. So okay. we're gonna be doing, so we'll be doing gift cards for them. Okay, okay. So roughly four baskets, but then um, gift cards for the, um, the old, older children. Okay, so are you sponsoring a family, it sounds like? Is it a family? Um, so the way that it works is that we don't sponsor a family. We sponsor mm-hmm. the family. So okay. every family there, that child will receive um, a basket. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Um, well, if there are any need for more, please let me know and I'll donate from Butterfly Visions Project. Definitely. Yeah. Well, so I, I can, can tell you right that. now, I can tell you right mm-hmm. now, um, if Butterfly Vision Projects can help us with the two, um, a sophomore and a senior, which are two males, 
That would be okay. wonderful. Yeah, so we were okay. just going to get gift cards, you know, maybe like food gift cards, probably right okay. now would probably be the best because, I mean, nothing's okay. open. But then right. in the future, maybe they can go to uh, American Eagle or something like that. But right now, we're probably looking at just gift cards. Um, I don't know if kids are still doing iTunes or Apple Music or, okay. you know, just things like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will definitely do that. I'll, um, I'll send you a donation or we'll talk afterwards about okay, us okay, giving great. for those two. Definitely. Okay, great. Great. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Okay. So I wanted to talk to you about your last book. So tell us about your books and tell us what your books are about. Now, when you say the last book, you're talking about the last book I wrote or the book I'm writing now? The last book you published. Oh, the last book I published was called <laughs> Dear God. Dear God, it's me, Jean. Uncut, yeah. unfiltered, unmasked. And this was relatively... Um, in addition to the first book, meaning um, it's more of a small bio, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, because with the first book, Breaking His Silence, of course, which was, so let's just start here. The first novel that I wrote was Breaking His Silence, which was a detailed depiction of me um, being in an abusive marriage that would carry over into an abusive um, affair is what we right. it's, it's an affair. Um, yeah. And so um, that's how I became a survivor. Um, I survived, I'm telling the story of going through it, coming out. And one of the biggest questions that I got from people that read the book was like, there has to be more. Right. You know, and I was like, but there is no more because the last chapter was the <laughs> last chapter. I'm out, right. I'm finished, it's done. <laughs> so what I wanted to do, Tiffany, was I wanted to write a book about Jean. Dear God, it's me, Jean. Um, some of these were conversations, you know, um, some were conversations, but more was just a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Dear God, it's me, Jean, uncut, which means I'm cut from a different cloth, uh -huh. uh, unfiltered, we have no filters, and unmasked, which means I really took off the mask of who um, I pretended to be. Mm -hmm. Right. So in this book, I'm uncovered. I'm telling the truth. I talk about my teenage. Well, first of all, I talk about um, being the product of a rape child. My mother was raped. Mm -hmm. um, so my mother had me at 15 years old. She was a girl. How does a 14 or 15 year old girl know how to mother a child? Mm -hmm. um, especially. Um, so we have to consider the time. So I was born in 1970. Times mm -hmm. were different then. Families yeah. kept a lot of secrets. Yeah. So my mother was raped, but it wasn't something that we talked about. I didn't know, you know, it mm -hmm. wasn't like anyone set me down and talked to me about anything. Um, and it wouldn't be until I became a teenager that I became curious and was like, well, who is my father? Who's my dad? And then mm -hmm. when I found out who my father was, um, you would have to get the, I don't know if I even put it in the book, but it's in the family. So yeah. I'm, I'm a child of, of somebody in, you know what I mean? Yeah. We, yeah. We, yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but things like that weren't talked about. So in um, that book, I'm unmasked, I'm unfiltered. And I tell, I tell you who Jean is. Um, mm -hmm. So I talk about from my birth, I talk about my teenage years, rebellious. Um, I talk about um, becoming um, uh, no longer a virgin, you know, losing my virginity at about 12, between 12 mm -hmm. and 13 years old. And that opened up, and, and when I lost my virginity during, during that age, um, it opened my lenses up to a whole new world. So mm -hmm. I'm no longer this little shy bachelor girl. Mm -hmm. I'm now, you know, I'm, I'm in this, uh, I'm in a different world right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I talk about my marriage. I talk about the infidelity of the marriage. I talk mm -hmm. about his infidelity. I talk about my infidelity. Um, and I, I, I talk about how the introduction of the abuse began, you know, um, and then from there, I talk about um, coming out and surviving and what I'm currently doing. So I think it was more of an inspirational write. I think it really was. Um, I wanted people to read that and not think that I was still a victim, if right. that makes sense. Yeah, um, because you can read that book, you can read Breaking His Silence and go, oh my God, I feel... 
oh my gosh, she went through all of that poor thing. And, and, and maybe in your mind or senses think, I'm still that person. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm absolutely not breaking his silence anymore. I've moved on and I'm shifting from um, Dear Goddess Me Jean to another story, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, um, but I'm a survivor. Yes. Yes, yes. Well, you definitely are a survivor, Miss Jean. <laughs> so that brings me up to another topic. We have a couple of more minutes. So I just wanted to, to talk about it because it's April. And so it's Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, where are you when it comes to um, awareness? Because we know that you um, are a child of rape. And we also know that, you know, you've met advocates, you've met victims who are also survivors of sexual assault as well. Myself, I'm a survivor of both domestic violence and sexual assault. So during this month, or do you do anything during this month with Diva Nation or? So actually, um, Diva Nation against better women, we have not been involved in that arena of sexual assault. Um, I, you know, again, we have the lunch and learns. And as you were once a speaker, you, you spoke once, we we were learning from you. Right. We learn from we learn from those who come from that in that in those luncheons. So mm -hmm. typically, or just to per se, um, do we uh, engage or do we in some form we do if we're having right. that that lunch and learning. We have a, a a survivor that's coming and telling and sharing her story. We all learn mm -hmm. that. Um, but right. I just I don't per se have a platform where we just. Um, Talk about that. Now, let me say right. this. It not, mm -hmm. It's not that, it's not that, I don't want to say it's not our arena. I just mm -hmm. think I don't have enough information. I have not been educated on sexual assault right. um, mm -hmm. apart from domestic violence, because I right. know this to be a victim of domestic violence. I know that unwanted sex can happen yes, um, yes. or unconsensual sex can happen mm -hmm. in that scene. But apart from that, um, I don't have enough information um, and I, right. I've not really been educated on sexual assault. So I think that's one of the reasons why I just do not put that platform there. Right, right. And that's good because one thing I've learned in my master's class and about to become a mental health counselor is that you, you, you stay in the field or the expertise that you have the most knowledge. Yeah. And yeah. so if you're not comfortable with that, then that's fine. And, um, but bringing it up, I think is just really important because sexual assault is a component of domestic violence. Right, it and is. And just like with tr sex trafficking or trafficking, I don't really know trafficking backgrounds and status, state, you know, so forth and so on, but I do know that sexual assault or rape is part of sex trafficking. Yes. So um, even though, you know, you don't talk about it in maybe the same way I do, right. you definitely do have the knowledge and know that domestic violence has a lot of components that have to do yes. with sexual yes. assault. So yes. that's good. Yes. That's great. Yes. That's great. Well, is there anything else you would like to share with us, Miss Diva? I think, oh, yes, I do. Um, thank you. I'm glad I took notes tonight too for Miss so, you know, every year, the uh, Diva Nation Against Battered Women, we host a celebration at the end of the year where we yes. award people such as yourself. Yes. Um, at the end of the year, we give um, what we consider awards to outstanding advocates um, yes. who are out doing community service, um, such as Butterfly Vision Project. But this year, we're going to do things a little bit different. Um, okay. This year, in, in, in Butterfly Vision's project, uh, loving yourself no more. Uh, wait a minute, what's Katrina? Loving yourself, loving no more abuse. No more abuse. I was yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> um, Alicia, uh, I'm gonna collaborate with you guys because this year we I am bringing in a film uh, producer from Atlanta. Her name Ooh. is Chris Scott. I will be introducing her film. Um, Ooh, Chris has nice. a film called Breakthrough. And Breakthrough is a film on domestic violence. Um, we're okay. going to be bringing our, teenage, bring, bringing our teenagers in, but it's centered around um, teen, um, I, I guess I would say a teen couple where okay. the abuse is being rendered, a boy is rendering this abuse on a, on a young girl. Um, okay. And so, so we're going to be bringing Chris in this year 
And we're going to do that along with the film and still awarding a few um, community advocates this year. So I wanted to bring that whole big thing under the, under one umbrella, the right. film, awards, and just have one big celebration this year in that order. That so sounds good. I'm That's moving, exciting. Uh, so right now, Chris has been in South Africa, and um, I believe she will be there for a few months. In fact, um, she did connect with me today. So more information about that will be coming forth. So I would love for your organization and some other organizations to be a part of that um, latter, the latter part of this year. That is, that is wonderful. You know, whenever you need me, as long as I, well, it's not going to be like last year. Last year, people asked me to do something like, uh, I got to look at my calendar and it was full. Yeah. <laughs> this year, we're not doing that. So yes, definitely let me know. You know, yeah. I'm always going to support you as long yeah, as, as long you. as I'm able and available, yeah. I'm definitely going to support yeah. you. So thank please. You. Thank you. And I, I believe in. Chris will be honored <laughs> to uh, see all the uh, organizations come together and support her yes. wonderful film. Yes. Yes, that would be that would be wonderful. And maybe if we can, if you can connect us, then we can interview her. So she, she can tell us oh, about absolutely. her project well, that she's doing. I have to have her on my show first. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll have her on my show. <laughs> send her on, and then I'll send her over to uh, uh, speak up and inspire. But that, but she would be willing to do that. Absolutely. Yes. I will okay, that's you. fine. I will that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Well, thank you, Miss Jean, for thank being you. on with us. Uh, I love you. I think you're amazing. And you are looking so gorgeous. Listen, let me say this. So, so oh, you know what? I forgot yeah. to point on it. You have been doing keto. And well, I can, I'm looking at you. Earlier. Yeah. yeah, and I'm looking see your face and gotten slim. Your so hair is that's all what I was talking about <laughs> when I was talking about eating those milk ducks because I've been yeah. quarantined. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so anyway, um, but I would say this: um, keto has been wonderful. I lost about 32 pounds. I've yes. gained about four back since being quarantined. So <laughs> I've got to kind of get back on um, on the path, but. Um, yeah, so you know, I feel great. I'm turning 50 this year. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll be turning 50 in June. So I'm going to do something <laughs> funky with my hair. Like, yeah. I literally think I'm going to cut it on. The, I'm going to uh -huh. do like a cool cut on the side uh -huh. and get some funky um, designs. Oh, that would be yeah. so cute. Uh, you, you do that. You do that. You yes, do that. I think, my mind is here. I'm like, let me get some funky designs in here and do something. Spontaneous. I'm turning 50. One time. You turn 50 one time. One so. time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you are looking great. You're looking fabulous. Mm -hmm. I can see the change. I can see your the spirit shining through. Yes. Um, I'm so proud of you and I love you. So thank you so I much you for too. being on. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Appreciate thank you. you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye. Right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you everybody the, uh, I gotta figure um, out how to leave we can leave together so just give me a second oh there she goes she figured it out so thank you everybody for tuning in with our interview with Miss Irish or Jean Benton um, the founder of Diva Nation please take a moment to go to her Facebook page like Diva Nation and reach out to her if you would like to talk to her about um, being an advocate or being a speaker, supporting her with the different roles that she is doing. Um, she's going into the ministry. So if you want to encourage her and support her, please reach out to her. Please friend her and also like the Diva Nation Facebook page. You can also find her on Instagram as well. Before we go, I have a surprise for everybody. I have a surprise. So last week I announced that I published the second release of my book, A Reality Check. So some people were saying, I've already read Reality Check. Yes, you have read Reality Check, but there are some uncut scenes from the very first manuscript that I added to the book. So there are some scenes, there's some juicy things going on, there's some more powerful um, and inspirational 
relationships and drama and so forth and so on going on a reality check um, that I have added. So the first time I wrote reality check was nine years ago. So that would be what, 2011, 2011. So the twins were about hmm, one years old. So then I was single, I was doing my thing. I had a lot going on in my life. So that manuscript was really, really raw. When I did the first release of reality check, I was concerned about my mom reading my book. So I cut out a lot of stuff, not this time. This re release of reality check has everything in it from the first book and more. So I am very excited, reality check, a Survivor Story is now on Kindle on Amazon. It is also on Goodreads. And I believe I'm working on getting it on Smashwords. But I got a package. And the package was sending me my author copy. So I have it right here. This is Reality Check a survivor story you can get it on amazon you can also get it on my website tiffanylbrown.com i am very 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 excited about this release of reality check because it has additional scenes that were taken out so it's if you thought it was raw and you thought it was intense before it is going to be two times that in this release because this is also if you notice Right here, it says book one. See that? So book two and book three have already been, have already been written. And those are follow-ups to your favorite characters here in Reality Check. So if you are looking for a good read, there's a lot of us that are working from home. There are a lot of us that are not working, unfortunately. Grab a good book. Grab Reality Check. A survivor story. You can get it on Amazon, on Kindle. I believe right now it's for $2.99. You can also get a paperback. If you're like me, I'm not a Kindle reader. I don't like to read on a tablet. I'm old fashioned when it comes to reading. So I want a physical copy. So I got my author copy in the mail and now you can get it yourself. It is on Amazon, but I would prefer to you to go to my website. So that way I can sign it for you and send it to you directly. So you can get it on tiffanylbrown.com or you can go to Kindle and get it there, Reality Check, A Survivor Story by Tiffany Brown. I highly, highly, highly recommend that if you are educating yourself right now on sexual assault and raising awareness right now on sexual assault, this is the month to get it. Reality Check is true life events that I myself have endured. And I gave my experiences to the characters in Reality Check. So it's true life experiences of me given to the characters in Reality Check. So it's very intense, it's very raw, it's very special, it's very unique. And it's really, really showing you um, the emotional and relationship things that go on after being a victim of rape. Um, it is, was emotional for me to write. And sometimes it can be emotional when I was going back and reading it this time to add in the things that were taking out from the first release, but it's a good book. And it's not just because it's mine. If you go to the reviews on Amazon for the first release, Reality Check by Tiffany Brown, you will see all the reviews there. Reality Check has affected the readers in good ways where it is helping them to be able to share their own stories, but also to see how I dealt with um, how myself or the main character in the book, Tony, how she dealt with being a victim, but still being an advocate in her community. Being a victim of it's something that is a daily effort to heal from, but this is my story given to the stories, given to the characters of Reality Check. So even though it's fiction, it is very, very much based on true life events. So I hope that you will take the time. You can go to Kindle right now and look up Reality Check, a survivor story by Tiffany Brown. You are gonna see one that has a purple cover, but then you will see the latest release that is in a teal color in honor of Sexual Assault Awareness Month.
So get your copy. If you want a paperback, you can go to tiffanylbrown.com to get your copy there. And tonight and tomorrow, so for 24 hours, the signed copy is going to be $12.99 on my website, tiffanylbrown.com. And you can get it on Kindle, of course, if you are a Kindle reader. Thank you again for tuning in. And I hope everyone has a spectacular night. Good night. Bye.